And this next story gives me a great deal of hope for the future. Yes. And that is our annual Peak Magazine Power List 2021 has come out. And this Peak Power List is recognizing the movers and shakers in, as it always does in a specific area. Now, in 2018, it highlighted industry leaders championing green causes. 2020, it looked at uh, corporate responsibility, sustainability. This year, the seventh edition of the Power List, they are looking at women who have been fearless about pushing the limits of gender, equality, and equity in their respective fields. It is a great story to bring on this morning on Saturday mornings. And let's bring on Farhan Shah, the editor-in-chief of The Peak Singapore, and Chadu Mahajan, the partner and sector leader at IBM ASEAN. First, uh, welcome to both of you today. Good morning, thank and you. thank you for having us. Uh, it's thank great you to for have having you. us. Yeah, Farhan, uh, you, your voice sounds really deep today. Oh, uh, yes. Let's not go into to what happened last night. Okay. okay. Well, Farhan, you look a little bit like you're in some sort of underground bunker. Do we need to raise a ransom or something? Or? No, I'm fine. I'm fine. I had a really uh, good night last night. So maybe this not is the story to draw we should the curtain. Be Maybe this is the story we should be talking about today. Okay. Anyway, uh, Farhan, tell us about this uh, 2021 power list, peak power list, and it, it sounds like a, a very appropriate um, uh, appropriate list and an appropriate topic this year. Sure. So the peak power list, you're right, uh, we've been holding it for, this is the eighth year that we're holding it, uh, and this year we decided to celebrate women uh, in Singapore uh, for a couple of reasons. One is 2021 is the year of celebrating SG women, and we thought it was appropriate to uh, head in that direction. Two, I'm a huge supporter of feminism and uh, equity and equality for women. And uh, having the platform to be able to celebrate their achievements, what they've done in this uh, you know, current climate uh, is, is was an excellent uh, choice to do that. Uh, and yeah, I, I mean, I feel like we are all talking about diversity, about uh, equality and, you know, the, the peak power list is that opportunity to to do that. Just like what you mentioned last year, we did corporate sustainability and environmentalism. This year, we celebrate women. And before we bring in, of course, our other guest, Charu, maybe Farhan, you just give us a taste of some of the women on your list and, and, and why you selected those particular names. Sure. So this year, uh, as for every year, we actually have a panel of judges to select the women Obviously, I'm male. I shouldn't be selecting the women. So we had four very, very capable women uh, from different industries uh, to select the list of 10 that we have, that we have this year. Um, the list is very varied, and I love it because you know, instead of just you know, being in one particular industry or in one particular field, you know, we, had, uh, we had musician, uh, we had uh, bankers, we had people in finance, we had people in science. And of course, we have people in, in or women in tech, uh, and we wanted to celebrate achievement in, in whatever field that we could find. I think the idea was that we didn't want to define narrowly define success. Success tends to be mm. uh, the, the definition of being successful in just your job, but actually, you could be successful in raising your family as well, and that's what we were aiming for. We're talking with Farhan Shah, the editor-in-chief of The Peak Singapore and about the Peak Power List 2021. So we're going to get to her just a second. But Farhan, why did you, uh, why did they choose uh, Chadu Mahajan as one of your power list? <laughs> I mean, her Tell resume about speaks her. for itself. Uh, she's a partner and sector lead in IBM. Uh, she's super huge in uh, pushing for women and technology. Uh, you know, she she has she runs a, her own other kind of side hustle as well. Uh, she's super popular on LinkedIn, which which always helps. But uh, <laughs> because every every time someone speaks about her or uh, says, "Oh, I, you know, have you do you know Charu?" and people are like, "Oh, yeah, I know her. She does a lot of work in technology. Does a lot of pushing mm. for women in tech." Yeah. So, and I think the idea of of uh, a lady trying to forge a path that no one else has forged before, so that it makes the path uh, for the people after her easier always resonates. 
Yeah. yeah. So, Charu, this is the part where you get to blow your own trumpet in a very <laughs> modest way. Uh, tell us a little bit about what you do and how you feel about being on this list. Well, thank you for having me on the show. Like I said, it's always good to be on this side of the show. I've normally been part of your listeners. So this is fantastic. Um, you know, I'm not going to blow my trumpet. I think Farhan's already done a lot of that. So thank you very much. Um, you know, I, um, I've always, I've been in consulting. I'm a career consultant. Um, I've been in consulting and I worked across consulting firms. I, um, as Farhan said, I'm a partner at IBM. Um, and part of what I do is help clients across industries, especially in consumer, retail, travel, transport, logistics, make transformations that will help them sustain their long-term agendas in the digital world. Um, and in doing so, uh, we're helping create and shape a future and an economic reality for our clients, which will turn profitability for them in the longer term. Now, part of what I do is not just helping them create those businesses, but also create skill sets, workforces, um, enabling them to put together skills and people who help them make that transformation. Um, and while, I, while we're doing that, um, you know, Glenn and Neil, part of that is bringing along people in our organization who look and feel like the consumers who are buying our customers' products and, and, and be rooted to them, know what they're, what they're like. And, you know, 50% of the, the, world, the world is women. And therefore, when, you know, technologies become all pervasive, we are helping make transformations to the digital world. We need to have women on the other side that understand what it is to be like a consumer of technology and help shape those futures, right? So that's what I do. And that's why it's really important for me to be on that power list. Um, because part of being on that list is being able to shape the futures of the economy and, 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 and really the world we're going to inherit tomorrow. Joe, just to follow up on that, the world we're going to inherit tomorrow, it ties in nicely with our general theme of the show, uh, which is the 20th anniversary of 9-11 and events that are happening now as we sit here in Afghanistan and the unlikely future or the uncertain future of women in Afghanistan. Why is it, with these stories still in the news, that it's so important that issues regarding women's equality, women's rights, women's place in society, in the workplace and so on, must continue to stay front and center in the news? I think that's a that's an excellent question. And, you know, I'm sitting there, I was very disheartened by what went on in Afghanistan. But I think there is there is a really important reality we cannot ignore. And the reality is that we hold up half the sky, right? Um, the positive news, if we read uh, the news coming out of China just two days ago, is that they're expecting the female economic potential, which means female buying power, to touch $5 trillion in the country in the next few years. So you've got an Afghanistan on the other side, where despite great strides in equality and female um, uh, literacy, um, we've seen them go back, you know, a few steps. And you've got the other side of the world that's banking on women to be the next force or the potential for economic consumption. I mean, the truth is, even though women are going to be the powerhouse for consumption, there are not enough of them in the workforce. The Center for Board Diversity in Singapore released statistics just a few days ago that said, look, you know, over the last couple of years, we've got a few more women in, you know, in, in boards and leadership positions, but it's nowhere near the 20% target. When we look at women in tech, and you heard the president talk about it a few days ago, we are still short of our 30% women in tech agenda. Now, the truth mm. is, if technology, if the economic potential is so dependent on women, why are there not enough women in the workforce? And that's not just at the senior positions, it's at the middle positions, it's at the junior positions. And in certain sectors that are non-traditional, we see even fewer women. So I think back to your point, Neil, yeah. If, if, you know, we, we, we can talk, I mean, the, the economic might of women will speak for itself. And Afghanistan wants to be potentially a significant force to reckon with in the world tomorrow. They too will need to realize that, right? So I, I, I think we need to have women part of the economy, part of the consumption, but driving what drives that consumption. Mm. We're talking with Chadu Mahajan, partner and sector lead at IBM ASEAN, and Farhan Shah, the editor-in-chief at the Peak Singapore. And Farhan, this year is also the uh, year of celebrating Singapore women uh, with the Ministry of Social and Family Development. For a number of years now, This uh, the uh, really putting uh, women who are excelling in their fields 
front and center has been going on, not just in Singapore, but around the world. And I think uh, the idea, Chadu, that you mentioned about the, the lack of seats around the boardroom table, etc., is one that is in dire need of being addressed. Uh, but Farhan, if I can just shift slightly the conversation, the peak has always focused and put focus on successful women in Singapore and across the region. Is there as much or more need to do that now? Or is, is that a steady, a steady path for the peak going forward? Uh, how, how do you guys view that from an editorial point of view? Oh, it's definitely a steady path. And I think we should continue uh, pushing the issue more. Uh, as Charu said, you know, women hold half, half the sky, but I think most of the time, uh, men are overly represented in media. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, I think it's only normal because a lot of times uh, men are doing a lot of things. But that's because women tend to not push their voice, their own voices forward. And they need uh, supporters, especially men, to help them in that, uh, to push their voices up as well. And that's what we're doing at the peak, to just give them the platform because they are as capable, if not more than us, uh, and we, they just need that that bit of support. They need of like, hey, you can do it too. Just to be a nudge, and that's what uh, the peak has been doing uh, in the past two years uh, to really just continue going towards in that direction. Uh, Chow, you might argue that women do have voices. They just haven't always had the platforms to use them, which mm -hmm. is what we need to change in the media yeah. ourselves. What do you think, on a personal level, Chow, needs to be done? Uh, in regards to the media and coverage of women's issues, women's rights, and just giving profiles to women like yourself? Yeah, I think that's a good question. I, for me, fundamentally, one of the things I hear a lot of the younger women talk about is the lack of female role models. Um, mm. The role models that they sometimes look at are probably politicians, leaders, that may seem a little bit too far for, for them to sort of attain um, or get to. Um, I think if we make the whole issue a little bit more real, showcase people, profiles, give this a voice where women can aspire to be like other women they see around them who are successful, I think it's going to become a lot more tangible to want to become like those role models, right? Um, many times if you if you poll women at work, they'll talk about, hey, I can't see anyone who looks and feel like, feels like me. So even if I put in so much effort, I'm never... I don't want to be like a man in that position. I, I just think media has so much power to reflect our individual realities and also aspirations. So making it real and showcasing women, showcasing careers, demystifying things like technology. I mean, our traditional ways in which we've looked at you know, technology, science, have just been ways that have put off mm. a lot of younger women. So just making it more accessible for us to want to aspire to be uh, like successful people ahead of us, I think is what media can really do. And I know Farhan does that very well. Um, yeah. And he's been able to link a lot of women to to companies, other media entities that will want to be associated with these women. Yeah. And who can and you know who can reflect of these women's uh, success. And Chadu, I think you know, fortunately, and I've seen it with my 15 year old daughter. Uh, you know, just the mindset of yeah. teens uh, it has already changed vastly it is uh, you know an automatic yes i can do whatever i want to do uh, and so i think that mindset has been taking hold uh, at least for uh, you know a number of years now and is continuing to grow i just wanted to briefly run through all the names in this power list and you can see this list at the peak um, backslash the peak power list uh, but julietta chan is on there lynn dang kelly kiak of of course, uh, Chadu, you are on. Um, o Chu Xuan, uh, Sandra Shriram is on, and let's see, Virginia, Virginia Tan, Tan. Yep, mm. Tang Ki Kun, Te Yu Yen, and Val Yap. And uh, Farhan, this just as you read through th this list, I got the magazine uh, the other day, and just reading through this list of the accomplishments, uh, you know, no wonder, right, that these women yeah. are on here. And and I think. If, if anything, the problem would have been by the, the power panel that chose them would have been cutting down the list. No, you're absolutely right. We had to cut down the list. <laughs> yeah. We cut well, it down okay. from, uh, yeah, cut it down from, from like uh, 40, 50 women to, to the current 10 that you see now. Which is a happy problem to have, Farhan, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Where do we go next, Farhan, in terms of making sure that 
you know, in addition to what you're doing at the peak, but that the way that society is, especially right here in Singapore, putting the value that is deserved on the contributions that women are making in Singapore, in business and in NGOs and elsewhere. How do we move that ball forward uh, in this 2021 year of celebrating Singapore women? Well, I mean, just being able to, I think for us as individuals uh, to support them, that is great. Uh, the fact that we're talking to Charu now and, and you know, Charu is sharing uh, her own trials and tribulations and her own uh, hopes, dreams and aspirations, and we're not talking her down, but giving her that platform is one great way that we can do it. I think, you know, I guess, for example, for you, Glenn, uh, teaching our daughters to, to realize that they can do whatever that they want to do that they are not bound by societal definitions. Uh, I think that's a great way to change uh, the next generation. Uh, and yeah, I mean, it's just really about supporting them. I feel that at the end of the day, we shouldn't be telling them what success is, what success is not. I think it's just telling them, uh, telling women, telling ourselves, telling men as well at the same time, right? Uh, that you can be whatever you want to be uh, and you don't have to yeah. let anyone decide that. And uh, will support you whatever your dreams are. Mm. I would tell my daughter, Farhan, that if she was going to do a big radio interview in the morning, I would not have a heavy night the night before. <laughs> I would not sit in a darkened room like a hostage. <laughs> that would be tips for success. Right? That would be my yes, tips for success for my impressionable 13-year-old daughter. <laughs> Oh, far on, you're a good sport. <laughs> uh, last word to you, Chadu, mm -hmm. and, and as we look forward, you've spoken already very eloquently this morning about about that. How do we push our, our, our MNCs and our SMEs to really drive forward in recognizing, uh, you know, female, female star power? Does there is a hesitancy in, in some quarters to do so? Yeah, and I think the way you do that, and, and there's no one way of doing it, but the way you do that is make it incumbent upon them. You know, we're fighting a sustainability battle and suddenly you've got ESG metrics where companies now need to come, you know, confirm how much carbon uh, they're offsetting. We've talked about, you know, other compliance, bribery, you know, over, the, over mm. a period of years, so many things under compliance have become areas where you start reporting. While diversity is not a number and it should not be brought down to a number, it's a starting point about how you can make this real. And it is therefore becoming incumbent on leaders and organizations, CEOs, to make sure that their own personal scorecard reflects how many women they're bringing along. Boards of organizations to ensure that they've got 50% diversity, if not more. So I think the easiest way, if not any, is to make sure that we start tracking it as a metric that our markets start to incentivize us on. Yeah, wonderful stuff. Awesome. Thank you to you both for being on today. The The Peak Powerless 2021 is out. You can see it online or, of course, pick up the Peak magazine. Farhan Shah, editor-in-chief with us this morning, and Chadu Mahajan, the partner and sector leader at IBM ASEAN. Thank you both for being with us, and thanks to you, Chadu, for all the great work you're doing. Thank you for having me again, and all the best. Thank you very much, Glenn and Neil.